another crime of NATO against Libyan civilians. You have all seen it before. It is not something novel. NATO strikes civilian areas, civilian neighborhoods, claiming its command and control areas or centers or nodes. NATO kills children, kills mothers and fathers. It never apologizes, never investigates, never comes to the ground to try to have any sort of dialogue of the, with the Libyan government. You saw with your own eyes the dead bodies of small children and their mother. There are many other examples around the country. Unfortunately, we are only able to take you to some scenes of these crimes. These take place every day. Sometimes whole families are killed. Sometimes individuals, people walking in the streets, people sitting in cafes, in their schools, universities, cafes, in every, every place. Is not, no place is safe from NATO. We appeal to the international media. We appeal to journalists. We appeal to international organizations. We appeal to all decent people from all around the world to help us stop this madness. NATO never came to protect civilians. The Libyan government was fighting against armed rebels. And now NATO is in Libya for months upon months, destroying our infrastructure, our electricity, our schools, our checkpoints that keep our cities safe, attacking houses, civilian neighborhoods. You saw that in Arada neighborhood, in Sarman city, today in Azlitan city, in Gargur, in many places. The number of civilian deaths is over 1,000 by now. And this excludes all military casualties. You have to convey the horror scenes you came across today to the world. You have to direct the hard questions to NATO. I receive your questions almost on a daily basis. You ask us the hard questions. We answer you faithfully and truthfully. We are asking you to direct the hard questions back home to your governments, especially if you are from the Western countries, from NATO's countries. You have to ask your prime ministers, your presidents, your commanders of the army, how is it that they could go and sleep every night knowing that every night they are killing people in Libya? When the Libyan government for months upon months have been seeking dialogue, have agreed to the African Union roadmap, have agreed to direct negotiation with the rebels. Even before NATO started the attacks, people seem to forget these very basic and essential things that we agreed to every single negotiation proposal, every single peace proposal. Our only simple and honest condition that no one should decide the future of Libya from outside. And no one has the right to speak for the Libyan people except the Libyan people themselves. Hardly a bad condition to make. But no one is listening to us. And NATO continues to bombard our cities. There are, Libya is a vast country. The killing continues in far places that we cannot take you to. In Sabha city, in Sirt city, even in the very south of Libya, in Obari and Ghat, in Al Wahat area, in Al Jufra area, in the western mountain areas. So, you as journalists, you have this moral duty to ask these hard questions and not ask them once, but persist. Why does NATO feel the need to continue this campaign?
And who gave NATO the mandate to ask the Libyan leader or the Libyan government to step down? This is not mandated by the United Nations, nor by the Security Council. They say they are here for the protection of civilians. When did the campaign become the change of the regime? Why is it that you as journalists accept this discourse from NATO without questioning when they talk about Gaddafi stepping down? You ask me and you ask the Prime Minister of Libya these questions. You say, why can't Gaddafi step down? When did the campaign become to overthrow the leader of this country? This is not allowed by the UN, it's not mandated by the Security Council. It's about the protection of civilians. In fact, legally, we have every right, even by international law, even by the Security Council resolutions themselves, we have the right to fight the armed civilian. We can legally, surprise, surprise to many of you, unfortunately, kill every single armed rebel without having any political, diplomatic, or legal issues whatsoever. According to every single national and international law, we can fight against the rebels, kill them one by one, hunt them down without having any moral or legal issues whatsoever. So why is it that in Libya the case is different? NATO is not just killing our families, it's providing air cover, continuous daily air cover to armed gangs that are trying to overthrow the government of a sovereign country.